Hi, welcome to Yoga U. I'm Jasmine Panzalan, and this is Jess. This class will be focused on side bending, which is a range of motion that we often overlook. And it's a range of movement that's actually quite important. And basically what we're going to focus on in side bending is increasing the space between the rib cage and the pelvis, making more room for the diaphragm and the abdominal organs. So now we'll come into Parjvottanasana, building into Parvriti Trikonasana. So Parjvottanasana is intense side stretch, and you'll see in just a moment why it's called that. So you'll stand um, with two blocks in the upright position at the very top of your mat, and you'll stand um, in between, actually it's just slightly in front of the, the blocks, and then stand with your feet hip distance apart and come into Tadasana. Set up your Tadasana from the ground up. Bring your hands to your hips. Keep your right leg forward. You'll step your left leg back and you'll step back about three and a half, four feet. So you do want to give yourself some length. If you're tight, you might think that you need to go shorter, but you would actually need to go longer. So the longer you are, the more length you're going to get in your spine. And just let's get you a little bit longer. So step your left foot back and then make sure your front heel lines up with the back heel. If you feel unsteady, step your right foot out a little bit. Are you good like that? Okay. Now bring your hands to your hips. And just like we did in Virabhadrasana 1, try to square your pelvis, your ribs, and your shoulders towards the wall you're looking at. So in order to do that, you pin the right hip back, roll the right ribs back, your right shoulder back, roll the left hip forward, left ribs, left shoulder, and now take the sides of your navel back. Now as we did in Sukhasana earlier, hinge right from your hip crease. So as your hips go back, your chest goes forward. Now you really need to stay rooted in your back heel so that you've got something to counter the weight of your torso. Place your hands on the blocks. You're going to start off just slightly um, ahead of your feet. And then, so show what it would be like if you rounded your upper back, Jess. Round your upper back. Good. This is how a lot of us are in this pose. And this is a habit that we hold on to in much of our day-to-day -day lives. So in our yoga practice, we're trying to get out of our habit. So instead, can you press the shoulder blades into your chest? Remember Ardha Uttanasana in the beginning. It's the same thing, just a little bit more challenging now that you're folded over one leg. Now, as you press the shoulder blades into the chest, Notice if you end up overarching your lower back and just show that, show what it would look like. Good. And instead, imagine again that I had that block resting underneath you and you're trying to escape the block. Jess is doing a really nice job. So basically you want your, your spine, your back to be like a tabletop. Next, both sides of the waist are equally long. What tends to happen is the right hip is slightly ahead of the left. And what that would do is it would shorten the right side. So it would be the same as standing like that. So instead, the hips go back, most especially the right hip. And as the hips go back, reach your chest forward. Nice. So you're welcome to stay here. This is plenty of work. Or you can start to walk your hands and your blocks forward and then allow your arms to pull even more length along your side body. Imagine that I was standing behind you like I am with Jess, pulling the hips back, keeping both sides of the waist equally long as the sternum goes forward. She's doing an excellent job of keeping her spine straight. Now stay here to really imprint this length you've created. So this is called intense side stretch. Now stay to exhale. Walk your hands back to where they originally began. Take your hands to your hips. Root into your feet and inhale, come up. That length is so important when you come into Parvriti Chikonasana. Keep your right thumb at your right hip crease. Raise your left arm. Now the tendency here is to veer forward over the right leg. And when you do that, you really shorten the right side. So the rib cage starts to move to the pelvis when you do that. Instead, we want pelvis moving away. Uh, sorry, rib cage moving away from the pelvis. So as you pin your right hip back and in, 
Reach your left arm up and now hinge white, once again, right from your hip crease. Imagine I'm holding you back here. And then reach forward towards the center of your mat. Jess is doing an excellent job here. Pinning the right hip back, reaching the chest straight forward. Now, don't think about twisting just yet. You're going to take your left hand to the block at any height that's appropriate for you, just to the outside of your right foot. Now, once again, go for more length. Root into your back heel. Reach your chest straight forward. And now keeping the rib cage moving away from your pelvis, twist around all of that length. Parviti Trikonasana. Once you're ready to, if you're able, you can raise your top arm to the ceiling or you can keep it on your hand, your hand on your hip. That's fine as well. With every inhale, move the rib cage away from the pelvis. With every exhale, twist around that. Now stay to exhale to come out of this. Bring your right arm back towards the wall behind you, down towards the floor. Look down at the floor, get steady. Inhale, the left arm takes you up and around. Parallel your feet, hands to your hips. Step or lightly hop your feet together. And we'll do the same thing other side starting with Parjvottanasana. So stand with your feet hips distance apart. This time you'll keep your left leg forward and you'll step your right leg back and give yourself some length. Make sure you're not walking on a tight rope. So it's heel to heel alignment. If you're unsteady, you can, all, you can go slightly wider than that. Turn your right toes into a 45 degree angle so that when you square your hips, you don't torque your knee. Now, Square the hips, your pelvis, your ribs, your shoulders towards the wall you're looking at. The left side goes back, the right side comes forward. Now keep rooted, stay rooted in your back heel. Hinge from your hips, goes towards the center line of your mat so that both sides of your waist are equally long, and then take your hands to the blocks. Now just let this hip hike up just for a moment. So when the hip hikes up, the rib cage moves towards the pelvis. Instead, move it away, create length here. Create length between your rib cage and pelvis. Now, as your hips go back, the sternum goes forward and remember your spine. So Jess is really doing a great job of keeping the spine long. Notice what's going on with your body. Do you need to find a slight arching in your upper back? Do you need to rein in the arching in your lower back? Take a moment to notice that. And now, if you're able, crawl your arms forward. Crawl your arms forward any amount and use your arms to help lengthen your side body. You can see how this looks very similar to downward facing dog. It looks similar to child's pose. It looks very similar to Ardha Uttanasana. So a lot of these poses are quite related to one another. Really imprint this length in your spine. Stay to exhale. Walk your hands back towards you. Take your hands to your hips. And as you inhale, root into your feet. Use your legs to lift your torso. Exhale to the top. And now remember that length you've just created. And we'll maintain that length in revolve triangle. Keep your left thumb at your left hip crease to remind that left hip to go back because the tendency is for it to hike forward. Reach your right arm up. Now vigorously press into your back heel, lengthen the back of your right knee, and as you exhale, go straight forward. Don't allow the left side to shorten. Now take your hand to the block, just to the outside of your foot, and now reach forward with your rib cage as your hips go back. And now revolve around that length. Parvriti Trikonasana, revolve triangle pose. So you can reach your left arm up to the ceiling, but if there's any tenderness in your shoulder, you can always keep your hand to your hip. And I didn't mention on the other side, but if it's too deep of a twist for you, you can always take your block to the inside of your foot. Now press the shoulder blades into the chest. Find that slight arching in your upper back. Again, we tend to be rounded. Stay to inhale. As you exhale, take your left arm back towards the wall behind you like you're swimming backwards. Take your gaze to the floor, get steady. Right arm takes you up and around. Parallel the feet. Step or lightly hop your feet together. 